to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God. Indivisible. With liberty and justice for all. Guns. Self-defense. Conceal carry. This is the Patriot Defense Podcast. From the war room in Idaho's high desert, here's your host, Todd Eccles. And we are back once again into Sunday afternoon, and we are tucked away in the war room somewhere in the high desert of southern Idaho. And I'm not flying solo today. We got the high point with you. We got, well, I got the high point. The high point weighs enough. That it's like just like three people over here. But no, I got Tarver, the Cajun cowboy, is in the house. In the house. And you made a special trip out here today just so you could shoot the high point, which we'll get into later. Yeah, well. But I shouldn't. I shouldn't have because I'm not in shape to be on audio right now. Yeah, you're fine. You're fine. Nobody, nobody knows, man. They can't see nothing. You just yeah, talk. They don't you know. I haven't slept in three days. You just need to talk. I, your personal life is not our business. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm in the market for crack right now. I'm like, if I can't sleep, I need energy. <laughs> so I, I see that you're. I see that you're still alive. Well, some people say that some people disagree you haven't had any weird knocks at the door or anything not yet not yet but i'm 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 i'm, I'm looking you like, <laughs> you got your attorney on standby <laughs> i'm looking for i am recruiting attorneys there you go do you want to get into that or are you just enough is enough you tell me that's your story we didn't pre we didn't pre-game this no no uh right, you tell me what you're good with and what you're not good with and uh i mean you don't need to be the you don't need to be the subject of the next podcast well, I'm going to do this on my podcast. I was supposed to do it today, but I'm too tired. And it's a lot easier. You know what's odd? When I heard the intro music play, I got a little bit of energy. Yeah. I, I peeked up a little bit. Did you like, be, we've been is, doing this for a while. Yeah, that's, it's, it's, that's weird. And I'm like, I'm sitting here half asleep, eyes burning, uh, in trouble. Heard the intro music. Well, the intro Picked music, a little bit. the intro music is like it's like it's like a double shot of espresso. Like, okay, bam! I need you're, that. You're awake. You're you're wired, and pretty soon it's going to get a lot easier to, to do the podcast out here because yet we're in a unair conditioned room. Okay, and in the afternoon the sun just blazes. Oh, you know how it is. Yeah, we've had some pretty. Oh, you get like four people in here in the summertime. <laughs> we, we've had some pretty. Uh, we've had times where we open the door and like. Uh, screw screw the background though. yeah we've had Open some pretty musty days in here before <laughs> that's a that's a nice way to put it you get you get four grown men in this room it's a little room and it's hot and there's no air movement yeah Ooh, that sounds awful i know well it is uh, it's, that's terrible. that that's that it's my for my only fans okay damn <laughs> <laughs> all right so no you, you've been doing anything good buying any guns is there anything out there you want to buy i know you've been really busy so i know what the I answers mean, so, are yeah I mean, but we're throwing it out there anyway no i have been so busy that i am trying to sneak this i have never had you have done my job before yeah oh yeah and we work off production and right? i'm very thankful i don't do it although i'm poor but yeah okay so <laughs> production i'm doing twenty two thousand per month yeah you understand what that means that is pretty big oh yeah I'm doing an additional twenty two thousand in extra. Yeah. That's I've never done that before. That's extra gun money. If I live through it. <laughs> if the, if the, well let's face it, the tax man's taking most of that. No. <laughs> That's I mean you I mean you you save your pennies and you and you start living right, you might be able to I'm spending it, man. You might be able to afford that high point. I'm spending it. I'm spending it all. It's good. I like it. Spend it. For you can't. Yeah. <laughs> For you don't have Until it. Until the C B D C comes in. Spend yeah. it. <laughs> I paid up my mortgage a year, and I'm spending stuff. And what would you buy right now if you had the money, as far as firearms are concerned? I like that. I just like to ask that question. I really don't know. Uh, would you buy ammo? Would you buy another gun? I think I'm going to go pick up some more ammo. Just, just. It just start. Because. The prices are starting to go up a smidge. I will say on, on ammo on online where I get it, I usually buy all my stuff from Freedom Munitions. Right. And I noticed a couple of weeks ago, like I haven't bought any this year. Usually, you know me, I have like two good purchases every year. I didn't buy any just because business has been a little slow, right? Because the right. price of everything else is high. And I was double checking the ammo prices and it had gone up just a little bit. And I think this is the, uh, you know, it's kind of foreshadowing what's to what's to come. Yeah. I do know right now. I think the, that's just because gas prices. Everything's well, got to go up a little bit. Everything. Because we haven't had any gun stuff going. No, but I will say that um, right now, if you are in the market for a rifle, which I am not, but... 
Well, I'm always in the market for guns, let's say, but uh, you can buy, you can pick up AR-15s right now for cheap. Like you can get a basic entry level AR-15 right now for like four hundred dollars. Really? Like get they are they are low right That's now. That's your backup gun. They they are super. They are down. That's the there. neighbor that needed a place to go and like here. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> cover me. Okay, watch him cover my. Why well, you got the Daniel Defense? He's over there with four hundred dollar AR. <laughs> he's trying to he's trying to get it to work. <laughs> throw some, throw some lead down range. You're throwing him some Chinese. <laughs> you're throwing him the Chinese mags. <laughs> yeah, I did. I, I bought one of those. Not four hundred dollars cheap, but I bought a cheap one. Just like. It's just there's backup. So I'm pretty, I'm actually pretty excited. I, uh, you know, look around here and I haven't been spending a lot of time out here because it's kind of, you know, it's not winter yet. I don't spend a lot of time in this room until it's like winter and there's like nothing else to do. But I've been coming out here and if you look around the war room here, like I've, I've changed some stuff and, you know, I'm kind of like organizing. I'm getting ready for a Got winter. The feather duster out. We're supposed to have a long, of what? Out here dusting and stuff. Huh? Uh, well, well, I changed that cupboard around. Look at that okay yeah so you, you haven't been out here for a while no. but anyhow i'm trying to ready this for the long for the long hard winter you know okay and and i'm well i feel lost in case my, you get snowed in i something. lost my train oh i i took a, one of my rifles apart one of my air 15s apart like years ago right because i was doing some trades and i actually took it apart i had a buddy take it apart because i'm not a rifle guy and he i traded him my lower like he took the lower so i have a upper and all the parts but no lower right and I probably should That's say pretty good trace. You gave your lower and got nothing. No, I I got I got some other stuff. But okay. but I but I didn't mind doing that because I actually have some uh, eighty percenters, right? Eighty percent lowers, right? It sounds like we're talking about the three percenters again. I get eighty percenters over here. Okay. Now I've got an eighty percent lower, and now I but I lost all the parts. <laughs> I had them in a Ziploc bag. Nice. I labeled them and I lost. I found them. Okay. I found them earlier this week. Oh, so while cleaning, while cleaning, and yes. you picked on me <laughs> about finding ammo. <laughs> yeah, you but, found, and you found a whole load. I found a whole gun, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> I have done that. Actually. So I actually found what I found was all the parts on the pieces, and now I got to remember where I put the lower. But um, once I find that. I am gonna. I'm gonna build my rifle. I know this doesn't seem like a lot to everyone, but this is me doing gunsmithing work. That's not a thing. It's not a thing. It's not a thing. Who's gonna shoot it first? I, my <laughs> well, my 18 year old. That's, okay. that's who shoots all my guns after I put them together. You know, I, I, here's what a bad dad I am. So years ago, I you know when I get him to shoot it before he gets off your health insurance. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I um. I took my shotgun apart. I like to deep clean my duck hunting shotgun. Okay. That I, I mean, it was, it had like dirt. It had all kinds of stuff in it. Years of hunting and not really cleaning. So I took it all apart. And it doesn't seem like much, but I'm not a mechanical, like I, I can do stuff, but that's right. about it. I put this whole thing back together, right? And uh, I, I, I had one of my daughters shoot it first. <laughs> Am I a horrible dad? I put it back together, and I mean, everything seemed to work. Like, I dry fired it, the slide, everything, like, and I'm like, uh, hey, do you want to shoot this? <laughs> <That's good. laughs> how, how horrible is that? Is it? Is that horrible? That's parent? bad, man. There are homeless people everywhere that will do it for 10 bucks. <laughs> That's true. That's I mean, true. Come on, but this was actually free, though. <laughs> That's bad. I don't, I don't i don't do it any, i don't do it anymore i ever, <laughs> i do have a nine-year-old that's up and coming that okay we'll have to look into that which i'm actually getting my uh my ar-15 ready for him to shoot and he we put, i mounted the scope on it the other day and got it dialed in and we're going to work our way out to 100 yards we should have done that actually today which we did not um but i think i got it i dialed the scope in um at about i think it was about 40 yards or so right. and uh let him shoot it i just kind of sighted it all in myself and let him shoot it and that kid just sits there i think i talked about it probably in the last podcast he just sits there he's never shot a rifle with a scope like ever and if you ever taught us you ever taught a kid how to use a scope an actual like scope on a rifle have you ever taught anyone that uh, a long time ago yeah and i generally for <laughs> so that, that's okay. it, it was so long ago and you like it's, back, back up from the scope yeah it's kind of it's <laughs> kind of hard because you don't hit up. you can explain to them what to see but you can't see what they're seeing right and uh i just don't want them to get cracked with that scope yeah, like, this kid this kid started stacking shots wow I, I was super impressed i'm really excited to get him back to 100 yards what was he shooting just a just a just a 556 five, okay uh out of the ar it was a um it was my Springfield Armory, uh, that one that I bought, the Vic, St. Victor. 
and it's a great it's a it's a great little gun man it's it's a fantastic little rifle and he just shot shot the crap out of it like that kid's put more rounds through that than i have i didn't know ars were going so cheap yeah they are so that one was not but like a basic entry level is going really really cheap right now so you need to go buy like five more yeah with all this nah money. i'm waiting to see if i get in trouble with all the one shot money hmm? <laughs> with all the one shot money <laughs> stacking rice and beans there you go if i if i don't get swatted <laughs> and if you want to hear more about that you can check out forgotten america podcast if i do one you need to do one before you, you get swatted okay well let's, we got to get into it a little bit now <laughs> no but you, it's a cliffhanger so they go check it out i didn't do anything wrong I okay didn't. we're this is all being recorded so state your state your story right <laughs> now I'll send it in. If something happens, I'll release this to, like, who do you want me to release this to? Which media outlet? It don't matter. They ain't going to play it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, you'll find it on the uh, Patriot Defense TikTok channel. <laughs> They'll say, why the process? <laughs> okay, do you want to get into it? Yes or no? Uh, you see, we can't say all this and not say yeah, nothing. No, we, no, we can't. I don't no. want to halfway get no, into no, it. No, no, don't, don't say nothing. Go to Forgotten American Podcast. He hasn't released it yet, but he'll release one in the next handful of days. I hope so. And uh, hoping tomorrow. And uh, he'll explain it all. But but we are right now. We are we are hiding him. <laughs> <laughs> He's in the Patriot Defense Witness Protection Program. You know, I wasn't even going to talk about it on mine, but now I have to. Yeah, he's going to live in the war room. And they see it's an underground bunker. Yeah, they no don't. One, they it, don't know where that's. It's at. an underground bunker somewhere in the high yeah. desert of southern Idaho. Nobody knows where that is. Guess who else is getting swatted? great <laughs> okay 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 uh <laughs> i don't want to pre no pressure well we gotta say a little something we don't though. a little bit we don't there's a new fetterman in town this right? is all on you dude there's a new fetterman <laughs> right this is not the real fetterman have you seen this guy not the new one okay you're doing politics on your your program i, I do it i don't freaking care <laughs> okay this is this is interesting this guy's dude. not john fetterman he uh he's an actor it looks similar to him now this is a guy who has to have uh voice to text to understand what you're saying he has to he carries around a phone or an ipad that does voice to text so he can comprehend you okay and uh all of a sudden he's they got a video of him out of nowhere he's disappeared for a while right disappeared and uh yeah, I think I think he stroked out. He's gone. Yeah, he's I done. think he's dead. He's uh, <laughs> Colombian necktie. No, nah, I think he had another stroke. And oh, gotcha. They checked out, so they got a. I like Colombian necktie better. Okay. Going. So they got an actor in there playing him. This guy shows up. A reporter asked him something. He immediately clicked in, understood what they were saying, and responded immediately. A little too quickly. Immediately. Uh, and this guy's playing stupid as he can be playing stupid okay this guy's uh, fetterman might have been stupid might not have been stupid but that's not his problem he is brain damaged he does not function properly his brain is scrambled from the stroke thanks to his shot anyway me with no sleep <laughs> <laughs> they released another video and i'm like hey, enjoy your job actor man uh just remember they may kill you instead of uh, giving you a retirement and I'm like, I'm like, they're going to kill this actor when they're done with him. Without thinking, you know, with no sleep for the last three days. I'm like, oh, holy shit. <laughs> That's the United States Senator's <laughs> Twitter feed. And you had the word kill in it. Freaking FBI. Is, oh! <laughs> freaking, freaking, freaking FBI is coming back out west. A couple of weeks ago, it was about a month ago, was that yeah, guy. Yeah, they trying Utah. to murder people everywhere. And I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> so I deleted it. But it's a United States Senator Twitter feed, so it's probably recorded. Uh, and I'm like, oh, Did man. you tell everyone at your house not to answer the door? No, I just keep sending them to the store. <laughs> You're sending them out. And <laughs> I'll die alone. <laughs> I, They're going to have to snipe you out of your car or something. I, I'm not showing up at the door with anything in my hands. <laughs> <laughs> You're done, dude. <laughs> no, but a business card for my attorney. But they don't, they don't try to apprehend people. They go up and try and kill them. 
and make news. Oh, we got one. He threatened the government. I'm like, I threatened no one. I told this actor, look out, because the government's probably going to kill you when <laughs> they don't right. you. They're just, you're disposable. And i like, oh, man. Drink some coffee and stop being stupid. <laughs> Everybody has a moment. <laughs> oh, you called me yesterday. I'm you, like, oh, man. You're I'm... like, uh, hey, I just need to let you know, this is what happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> this is the... This is what free speech is in the United States now. Oh man, this is what it, it is. No, it is. It definitely, it definitely it, is. It definitely is. And uh, I'm like, okay. So, but after thinking about it, anyway, I don't think. Honestly, I think Fetterman stroked out, and they're putting this guy in his place. And I'm like, why bother? Why you have a Democrat governor? He can appoint a new senator, right? Um. Dude, who knows why they're doing? I mean, we just had that lady, the the the, the governor of New Mexico, yeah, right, say that you can't carry guns here. I'm going to suspend it for 30 a days. Health emergency. A health you're taking emergency. my whole podcast now. A health emergency. <laughs> I'm taking your whole podcast. This is this, this is gun related. <laughs> but it, it, they they're calling everything a health emergency. Yeah. They're also starting to call uh, racist comments online a health emergency. Health emergency. What was they going to give the CDC power to a World Health Organization power over? Health emergency. Yeah, there you go. It's health. It's, I'm like you, you, you. Mm. Well, the interesting part about the whole thing, Governor, and I know I've I brought this up before, was you know after they she did that, what would she do? She walked out of that news conference surrounded by armed security. <laughs> I mean, it's okay for them, but it's not okay for you. What kills me is their attitude and how belligerent they are and how strong, firm they oh, yeah. are against American people. I'm like, you have zero fear. Zero fear. Yeah. I'm like, mm, no comment. <laughs> yeah. Well, did you see the people? I mean, the people I mean, no the, the people of, of New Mexico actually did pretty good. They had they had some, uh, you know, their their deal they had in the park down there, right? Their protest, and, and they stood up and... And it, and it went really well, and a lot of people saw it. And, you know, the right thing happened where they did show up with firearms, and they were armed, and they were protesting. But guess what? No one got crazy. Right. Well, we're starting to see some pushback. We're starting to see uh, – you heard of the Blade Runners in the U.K.? No. Oh, man, they put up these cameras to basically just – they're forcing anybody that has a car. Like I, I can't remember what it was, like five years or older. Um off the streets and Holy you get electric shit, or I'm going to be walking everywhere uh, or you get <laughs> yeah either you get or you get a fines everywhere you go so the blade runners are out there cutting these cameras down and they've cut down hundreds of them oh wow and it's just civil disobedience and they're just destroying them so we're starting to see some pushback we're starting to see the people show up with guns protesting and I'm like good uh don't do anything crazy yeah don't do anything crazy because that's kind of what they want i mean she did that under the under a health deal but also she said they were in a, what was it like an, an an emergency right declared an emergency declaration that tried to take the guns because of a health thing yeah right so they would love to do that and say you're not responsible this is this is like an emergency mm -hmm. thing we're going to lock everyone down and bye-bye guns yeah well they're they're wanting people to do something crazy some some type of violence and you got some nuts out there that are calling for it usually mostly feds yeah uh no 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 it's don't not, do it no 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 beware no no there's a time for everything and it, we a long way away from that time yes yes i i agree 100 percent. that is mad max time yeah that's when it's and it's it's i think they're Oh well, I, ain't going I will tell you. I you know I, I went out of town, and this is a gun podcast, and we will get to firearms here in a minute. But you mentioned Mad Max, and it's super funny. I was when I was out of town. I was in Oregon, and I was in the middle of the coastal range. I forget what town I was in. I can't even. Maybe it was just outside. It was just outside of like Coos Bay. Um, we, so we were kind of inland, but not too far. And we stopped to get fuel on a Sunday morning. And are you out of water? I am. Uh oh. Here, right there. Okay, thank you. That one, that one gets clean. Yeah, it looks nice and warm. <laughs> it is. 
<laughs> um, anyhow, there's uh, I, we were pulled up to get gas, and these Mad Max looking vehicles rolled in. Sweet, like these old, like these really old, like like Chevy Bel Airs, all beat up. Like I think they were just the guys made them for a, for a show. I hope. But they were like on four wheel drive frames. They were rusty. They had gas cans strapped. They looked like these people were going to their compound in the woods, man. Nice. It was it was actually pretty. They they look really cool. Right. Uh, but I was like, man, is that is that where we're headed? Like like you have a house up in the woods and you gotta get there some old four wheel drive piece of crap car. Uh, you know, there's Mad Max stuff. Yeah. It, you know that scene in Mad Max where the vehicles. That's right. what this what this thing looked like. I will find a. Well, we're talking. I'll find the freaking picture. Like I didn't send it to you. It's phenomenal. Well, it's getting so bad that people are starting to push back, and you got the uh, new COVID coming, and now there's oh yeah, dengue fever. Uh, however you pronounce that, you got the. Uh, I sent that uh, to you. Yeah. Oh, you did. Yeah, uh, you, you. I knew you knew about it before I sent it to you, but yeah. Okay, then you got what? What's that one in India? The. Uh, oh, that is nice. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Look at that. I like that. Yes, yeah, so it I. Is it jacked up? Yeah, it's on. It's on. A, uh, you guys can't see this, obviously, but that dude's ready to go, man. Yeah. That's... Is that an exhaust coming up out of the hood? <laughs> yeah, dude. He's ready to go deep dude, water. He's ready. To... He's <laughs> I mean, an intake. He's yeah. got his intake yeah. like three foot above the hood. Yeah, dude. It's cra- <laughs> some, cra- some crazy stuff. You see, I want it's Oregon. I want to say the guy was running drugs, but I don't think no, so. No, it's no. all legal over there. That's too much attention on that. Guy. Yeah, dude. Is 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 pretty insane. Off the off the post that to that Patriot Defense Facebook page. Where everyone can see now that we talked about it. That's yeah, yeah, I like that. Super super impressive little car. But you know, here's the thing. I wanted to get you over here today. Like, okay. oh, it was because I miss you having you on the podcast, right? When it slows down for you, it's winter, you're invited here all the time. Okay. I but keep let's... thinking it's going to slow down, and it keeps getting worse. Well, I know. I'm about to slow it down. I'm going to... <laughs> so we started, started the saying, uh, this hunting with High Point. I heard you, yeah. And so you came over today to check out. The JXP10. I should really shoot it now that I've woken up a little bit. So what? I mean, <laughs> you you held it though. I held it. How the thing's freaking heavy. Yeah, it's every bit. It's heavier than your Deagle. We figured that out. It's like a little over three pounds. Yeah, it's it's a big old gun. So have you ever shot ten millimeters before? No. Really? Yeah, so I have, and in a lighter gun. I, I don't shot, think so. I shot the Glocks. Uh, I've tired. shot the. Um, I shot the I shot it in like a nineteen eleven. That's like the skit the Sig is it Scorpion the version the ten mil and they have a little bit of recoil to it. They're kind of snappy. They're kind of like the forty, right? right? Um, you don't feel the recoil on that gun. No, that gun is so freaking heavy, right? And so I've got it all. I'll have to show you the scope I bought for it. The scope is here. It's it's I, it's up in a cupboard right now. But I got the scope for it. It's handgun scope. And I got the mount. I located a mount. I talked about having one built, but I did locate one for fifteen bucks. Nice. So I ordered it, and is it gonna hold up when you shoot? <laughs> I bought here's so here's the thing, I bought an inexpensive ten mil. I mean the the, the ten mil, the JXP ten, the high point. It's like a, I I think I paid like hundred eighty bucks for it. That's amazing. Okay, so I've got That's amazing. I've got fifteen dollars in scope mounts, the rings, and then I had to come up with a mount that attached to the gun that I could attach to that went up over the slide that I could attach the scope to. Found that it actually mounts onto the the picatinny rail and then angles back and and you can it's another picatinny rail on top and i I bought that for 15 bucks so those two pieces will be here tuesday and as soon as it gets here i'm going to mount them suckers up and uh then i'm going to i'm going to dial that in my goal is i want to see what it does at 100 yards because i'm really really curious Mm mm-hmm uh, but I want to get it out and see what it does at 50 yards. I think 40 to 50 yards would probably be my max for the deer, just to be an ethical hunter. Right. But I'm curious to see what it'll do at 100 yards. I want to see what the drop's going to be, all that stuff. But I, I want to see what it does at 50 yards as well, because that's my goal. That's my goal range. And I, the reason why I put a scope on it is because the sights on those things are so undesirable. They're 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 not pleasant. They're not pleasant at all. So we're gonna with the scope will help me but get it. But to get a ten millimeter that functions for that price is amazing. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's amazing. I saw a bunch of tests. Uh, I was reading a bunch of articles on it, and the guys like, yeah, we tested. We put like six hundred rounds through it. And we didn't have any problems. It just, it and the guys like, it just gets better the more you shoot it. 
it just everything kind of frees up and you just, you're just like good to go and, and it's got that lifetime freaking warranty on it i have seen people try to destroy them and it doesn't it doesn't work mm-hmm. they just run no that's why way back people make fun of them like you know that thing will kill you too <laughs> so let's i mean let's let's talk let's talk about high point right i mean it's it's an american-made company right that's good and you know they're still in business and they sell a lot of firearms so they must be doing something right i mean if you wanted to if you know just because you want to practice self-defense you want to carry a gun like i don't know a lot of people that carry high points but i'm sure there's somebody that does it doesn't mean we need to price a person out of that and i know i give high points a hard time as well and but you everybody know does but they go bang they go would bang. you rather have a high point or scc yeah high point <laughs> <laughs> and you're gonna save money <laughs> You're going to probably save 50, 60 bucks. They're not attractive. No, they're not. Uh, but if you need something and can't afford something, they'll work. So I, um, I'm i also going to mount. So when I mount on the Picatinny rail, the, the scope mount, underneath that, it also gives me, it like adds another Picatinny mount underneath there. So I don't oh. actually lose it, right? And so I, I'm going to use, if I shoot this thing at 50 yards, I'm going to need a like a bipod and uh anthony if uh, a listener of the podcast he's came come and taken a class out here before he stopped by earlier today and he he gave me a bipod for it it's not it's it's not a real tall one Look which at you getting gifts from well he loaned it to me okay he loaned it to me yeah I mean, you didn't have to say that <laughs> could have said thanks for the gift anthony <laughs> yeah yeah well he told me i could have it if i wanted to buy his rifle okay <laughs> so um anyhow so it mounts but i need i think what i need i'm going to check it out and try it out and i I appreciate you letting me borrow that anthony but i think what i'm going to try and find though after giving this some thought is a taller one like i want to be able to stand up and like put the freaking bipod mounts out i want to attach this thing to the gun there's no way oh it's a rifle i got you yeah so it's it's that right there it's that right there okay what is it like anywhere from six to 18 inches yeah it's about it probably extends out about like that okay, or so but yeah. i want to get a tall one right, right. like a standing one and i know that's going to be kind of spendy and i'm thinking about doing that um it's going to be have to be think about this okay so i'm not going to be able to like sneak up on a deer and rack the slide if i see a deer I just it's not going to happen right. i'm gonna to have to rack the slide chamber the round leave the gun on safety right now this thing's going to have a mount on it for a freaking scope right and then i would like to permanently not permanently but attach and leave attached while i'm hunting these this bipod my here's my problem how am i going to i can't holster the gun at that point no you can't holster the gun anyway well i'm gonna i was gonna build a custom holster for it okay um, so I was going to fold like 58 pieces you know of Kydex. That's called? A backpack. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, and I'm not quite You're sure. Taking a backpack, man. I'm not quite sure. Now, I did talk to, I was actually talking to my son-in-law, and he goes, well, if you've got the bipod extended out and the gun folded in there, he's like, could you put like a sling, make like a sling, and just like unclip the sling and then pull this up, sting the legs out, and you're good to go. Wow, you guys are going, y'all going Mad Max on this Dude, thing. I, I wanted to do this right. So here's the thing. is my One of my goals was to get recognized. I explained this on the last podcast. I wanted High Point to see it just, just yeah. because they saw it. That's cool. They actually listened to my freaking podcast. They listened to the Patriot Defense podcast. That's, 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 that's amazing. Yeah. And uh, they uh, they contacted me and they want me to like let them you know send them pictures tag them all that good stuff which in their mind is just free advertising I I know how this is working yeah, yeah. Out, which is fine and I'm getting some free viewing as well uh, I, all my viewing is free but I'm getting some more extra <laughs> viewing uh, than I normally get so I'm kind of looking forward to that this is this is going to be fun as soon as I get that scope mounted we'll go out and do the the distance test and then I got to find some hunting ammo yeah. I got contacted earlier, and I don't know his name, but he met. He texted me. He's not from Idaho, that I can tell. I have to look at his number again. But he said he listened to the podcast and just let me know. And I think he was a white-tailed deer he was hunting. Okay. But he just harvested his white-tailed deer, or his deer this year. I'm in, assuming in Idaho? Not in Idaho. Okay. It wasn't an Idaho number, but he harvested a deer, I'm assuming white-tailed, because he said he harvested it with his Gen 5 G19. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He said the handgun is it's fun. Where is that at? Where's where do you get that deer at? No, yeah, I'd love yeah. A night G nineteen? Yeah, that's what he said. G nineteen, so that's a nine mil Glock. Legally. 
<laughs> they, legally. <laughs> okay, serious. That's, serious. Yeah, that's... So short range. I'm going to hunt some short range weapon seasons or try. Is it doing a pin? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I need a text. I need a picture. You know, it's funny. I, well. No, don't talk. You okay. Get, yeah, they used to have these. We used to, I used to work at the Department of Corrections, and they'd have these senators come in. Game farms. Yeah. <laughs> they'd, they'd come in and want to kill a deer, and they'd come to the prisons. And because um, you had inmates all over the place, and they would, you know, uh, go get your deer and clean it and. Uh, just, oh yeah, yeah. Dress it if he shot it and it fell down the cliff. Guess what? Uh, I, it's not my problem. <laughs> Go get it, fellas. Uh, it was terrible. That's awesome. <laughs> and these guys, we had a pen that was full of tame deer. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> you could pat them, and I'm like, these senators are flying on a helicopter, uh, shoot a deer and fly back out in ten, fifteen minutes. I'm like, y'all had a rope around that deer's leg, didn't you? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> they had it tied to some, with some I tied it with some paracord. <laughs> Couldn't move. <laughs> had a muzzle on it. <laughs> oh my god. No, I don't know any of that. But these guys would fly in, shoot a deer in ten minutes and fly out, and I'm like, hmm Y'all getting deer from the deer farm. But they did is they, they they opened the gate, they smacked it on the butt, it went trotting out there and like, Look, Senator, there's the deer. And he had a get it quick. He had a minigun or something. <laughs> <laughs> No, would they take the meat, or would the would the prison get the meat? No, they take the meat. It's it, it's PR. It's PR. It's politics. Yeah, yeah, state politics. If you knew the real stuff that goes on behind the scenes, like that kind of stuff, it's 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 oh, it's it's filthy, man. It's filthy. Oh, I would imagine. I would, but I'm I'm looking forward to this whole high point thing. This is gonna be this is gonna be great. So hopefully, when I get a whole outfit put together, I'll start putting out some more pictures and videos and all that good stuff because this is this is gonna be fun. This and if I don't shoot a deer, I'm hunting a damn coyote with it. Okay, you're gonna get something with it. I'm gonna get something, and we're so, gonna harvest something with this high point. So here's the thing: is I know the ten mil will take out the deer, right? I hundred percent. It'll. I, I have no doubts, and I'm. I know pretty much hundred percent. No doubts. I have. I will if I see a deer and I can get close enough. I I I'm able to make the shot. I got no no doubts there. I mean, I'm a decent enough shooter. That's, that's easy. The problem is, is this is Idaho. We don't got a bunch of trees. There's just a lot of sagebrush, and it's me finding a deer in high pressure, over pressured hunting areas that yeah. I'm allowed to hunt in, and me getting close enough on a deer that's been chased around by multiple. You know what I'm saying? So that right there, that might be the only downfall. You got some wild hunters out here too. We do. You got people who be on the other side of the canyon and fire at a deer close to you. It's like. Hey, yeah. Well, fellas. if I can go in these short range, short range units, then they're stuck with muzzle loaders and archery, okay, and me, and like shotguns. So they can't take real far, but it's still getting close, and it's the property and be, not being on private property and all that stuff. So yeah, the problem is with it being flat and no trees. It's it's, it's tough. Yeah, it can be tough. So anyhow, in Louisiana, man, you just sit in a tree stand. I hunted in a tree stand before. That was the most fun hunting I've ever done in my life. You sit there and chill out and have a good time? I took a nap. Wait for him to show up? Yeah, I strapped myself to the tree, lean forward, close my eyes, and just when you wake up, you kind of open your eyes first. and you look. Yeah, don't jump. <laughs> you look around, pop your deer, yeah. and you're, you're, you're good to go. Usually, I shoot him. When I did Who that. put and, all that corn on the ground? Yeah, I was going to say, I shot him over the pile of corn. <laughs> What's the salt block doing out here? What the hell's going on? At some states, that's 100% legal. Yeah. I had this stuff called stump liquor. Everything's legal if you don't get caught. Well, yeah. I drag this. We do not endorse that. I would drag an old rotten log, and I'd position it in the perfect shooting line, mm -hmm. and then i go buy this jelly stuff. It's called stump liquor. Like, you could buy it in the sporting goods section. It, it tasted like, I don't know, apples or whatever, and I would just take, like, four gallons of that. And I would just coat this. I let it all soak into that rot. And so at the end of the season, the log was just gone because all the deer would come and it. lick on it so much. <laughs> it just dissolved. It was a phenomenal way to hunt deer. Okay. There you go. I, it was great. But I got some more news. Okay. I got some more. We are getting a Texas star. A what? I'm getting a Texas star to shoot at. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I was yeah, explaining. Yeah, told me that. We had a... Uh, we have a beneficiary. Look at you. Look at you with the listeners, man. I have a podcast listener. Kidding he listens to the radio show. He is a student. And this guy is just, he's just like super talented in this little machine shop that he has. And uh, if any listener wants to give me a gift, yeah. you know, there's what's that Dodge, uh, the, the big Dodge, the. 
Oh, Raptor? the T-Rex? The T-Rex. The T-Rex. The T-Rex. I need a T-Rex, y'all. Or is and, it a T-Rex or something like that? Yeah. Yeah. yeah you it's know, it's, 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 yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's for the children. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the T-R-T-R-X, so T-Rex, yeah. Yeah, that'd be awesome to pull up on that. Yeah, it would. But, you know, we're getting this stuff. And I think this thing's going to be, like, ready in the next week or two. Like, it, they brought it out yesterday and, like, test fit everything on it. And just to, we wanted to figure out. Oh yeah, yeah. We wanted to figure out the release because you. Tired. I lost my you're, train of you're thought. You're good. You got to release the plates when you shoot them, and so we test fit some of that and shot them with different calibers. In fact, he got it to the point where you can pop it. I don't recommend it, but you can shoot it with a 22 and it'll fall off. Like this thing is freaking amazing. He got done. I'm gonna put him on the spot. He, he I know, he's, you know, I know Jeff's listening because he'll listen to this. Uh, he got done, and as we're packing this thing up, I was helping him carry it to the car. He go, looks at me and goes. When I get done with this, I've been thinking about building you a plate rack. And I'm like, what? So thank you, Jeff. Thank you. He's going to build these, and they're going to live here. And this is going to be absolutely amazing. I'm going to have a little. I'm going to have to dig a bigger range now. Good job, Jeff. Have one. I bring in more dirt. Have one in the steel targets. <laughs> I got to come out shooting, man. I done got so busy. I don't know. I hadn't shot in you need over to over a year, maybe two. When I get this Texas Star, I'm like, good grief, slow down, enjoy life, man. Yeah, you got to bring this Texas Star, and we'll tear it up with the high point. I'll get both high points out. I'll get the Yeet Cannon, the JXP10. We'll be good to go. <laughs> you don't look excited. No. Okay, we'll get your canic out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's canic. I'll bring you can bring the ten millimeter. I'll bring the uh Desert Eagle. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> we'll blindfold each other and you pick them up, we won't know which one actually you probably which know the high point's gonna be heavier. I'm I am i am working at a disadvantage. I was so out of it when I got yeah, here. Yeah, I know. Uh I had just Well you just got done working. I, yeah, well, and I'm headed to another job, so that's why I'm not doing a podcast today. This was along my path between jobs. Yeah, yeah. Um it's a good break for you. I needed it. I come in here feeling dizzy. I'm like, dizzy. <laughs> tell me that. <laughs> I'm tired. And uh, yeah, so I, I I didn't get a good feel of it. Um, I'll let you know if you're feeling still feeling dizzy and you actually accidentally like pass out or something. Don't worry, I've got tourniquets in here. Okay, and I will take care of you. Okay. They say if you faint. Put a tourniquet around your neck to keep the blood in your brain. That I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that's what I'll do. No problem whatsoever. Nah, just lack of sleep and dehydrated. That's all. Yeah, and it's all good. I've I've been there. So, what do you think about the whole Liberty gun safe? I know that's kind of like old news now since New Mexico. Uh, yeah, uh, that's crazy. Looks like some liberal company actually is the parent company of it now. They bought them out a couple years ago. Yeah. Um, my question is. Well, first of all, that's bad. Don't give out codes for anything. Well, yeah, uh, come with a come with a court order. What's well, and then you? Hey, I got to give it up. Well, but f- f- my biggest yeah. problem is why do you have a code, a secret yeah. master code, to my safe? And if I can't get into it, you're going to tell me to call a locksmith. So what they're so what they're saying is, and I, I watched some videos on this. Actually, another safe company uh, came on TikTok and was explaining how this works. And they said every safe company has a ma- has a master code to your safe, right? You know their brand of safe, right? Um, and they said what you can do, and they they keep a master code because if you get locked out, you're supposed to be able to like somehow like document everything and show them, and they'll let you back in your safe. But uh, they also said that you can do this upon request that you can actually. Uh, talk to your safe company, and they can give you the master code, and they can tell you how to reprogram this thing. So there is no master code anymore. But you run the risk of if you lock yourself out, you're screwed. You might as well call a locksmith at that point or cut into it, right? right. And I think if I had a safe, that's what I would do. In fact, yeah. this this company um, was that you know they they saw this uh, and not Liberty Safe, this other company, and they said, hey, look, we'll come. You call us, we will send out one of our representatives, and they will change. They will tell you how to do it over the phone. Or we will show up to your house and we will change the master code. We'll get rid of the master code. Uh, we'll set it all up. So all you got to do is punch in whatever you want to punch in. And you can make a brand new code that only you have. And I thought that was kind of cool. But what bothers me, though, is they have that master code, but yet the safe is yours. You've purchased it with your money. It is yours. They they How can they... 
command them to open it up. So there's a brand. Well, they don't have a court order. They have a search warrant. Yeah. Well, there's a branded door knob, like a front door lock. So I don't know how you say it. Slage, S-C-H-L-A-G-E, right? Yeah, right. So, like, could could they give them a court order to, like, here, I'm going to send you a key, or hey, this is how you open my front door once I buy that? Well, if they have a court order, they're coming in, either with a battering ram or the key. So they need to they need to figure it out on their own. My problem is, uh, once they have that key, like once they have that code, do they have that for everything for all the Liberty States for all the lock, front yeah. door locks? Well, you know that's we talked about this for with newer cars. I think we've talked about it in the past, or it's been in the news a long time ago. But when OnStar first came out, or right. these electronic cars, these well, not electric cars, but these cars that just they, these new cars, even gas powered, they have all these computers in them, right? Right. They're in a police chase. Right, the police are. Hey, we need to, need to shut this car down. You know, we. I mean, that's doable. Like they can do that on these newer vehicles. Yes, yeah. that's that's insane. The whole thing is just insane to me. Yeah, and it's uh, the problem with it is well, you don't want a high speed chase. You want the bad guys taking off the ground, uh, off the streets, and all that stuff. Right. The problem is, we now have people getting twenty two years that ain't even close to the capital. Uh, wasn't even in in dc right uh they're getting 22 years you got a guy who murdered somebody on camera and said well he was an extremist republican he got five years so what's being classified as bad guys anymore just like my tweet it was silly it was nothing it was a joke uh, kind of but it's like be careful who you get in bed with there actor man i heard some clicks <laughs> 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 it don't matter. <laughs> They're listening. It don't matter. Well, it's it's like the, you know, there's that saying, you know, uh, would you rather, uh, you know, give up, uh, was it give up your, you know, some liberty in lieu of, in lieu of safety or, or, you know, you know the saying. Right. Uh, right. I, I, I butcher all these sayings. I never remember them in the heat of the moment. Right. <laughs> but, you know, I'm not willing to do that. Like, I understand that, that with liberty comes, you know, you got to live, yeah. you yeah, got to, got- you got to live dangerously. Yeah, a little bit. There becomes a risk, right? There is a risk. I would rather have that risk than lose my than lose my freedom, lose my liberty. Liberty safe. Yeah. Uh-huh. You know where the safety's at? In a single man jail cell. Nobody's gonna hurt you. Yeah, exactly. You safe. You safe. You got twenty four hour protection. <laughs> yeah. You got three meals a day. You okay? But uh, yeah, it's it's going to be dangerous and it's going to get worse. I mean, we're not we're not a moral people that we once were. Yeah. So I'm, I'm 100 moral. Okay, well, <laughs> I'm going to go hunt a deer with my high point. That's ethical. It is. You no, know, it is. It's ethical, people, and it is. I've had some people question me. It is legal, as far as I can tell from the hunting regs. I've checked them inside and out a dozen times. I can do this. This is 100 percent legal. And what does it start at 10 millimeter? Uh, it doesn't even say a caliber. It says straight wall. You can short. You can hunt in a short range unit. Right. With any, uh, what do they with a handgun, short range? with, uh, I don't know, but it just says any, when it comes to handguns, it says any straight walled, uh, uh, caliber, you know, straight walled cartridge, right. which is a 10 millimeter is, it's not knocked down a straight walled center fire. That's kind of silly though. You got some neck downs that are smaller than a 10 millimeter. Yeah, c- center fire, straight, uh, walled cartridges that had, weren't originally developed for use in rifles. Okay. So ten, I I would imagine Sounds if like you nine's okay. Sounds like I was gonna, I was gonna, okay. That's that's kind of what I was gonna say, right? So I ten, I have no doubt ten will do it. I'd carry a, a ten millimeter in the woods to defend off a freaking bear. You know, I have yeah. I have no problem. To, ten mil is gonna do it, right? It's just all about making the shot, which I'm pretty sure I can do. I don't really have any doubts at this point. Right. But uh, there we go. You know, follow all the TikToks, follow all the social medias. Uh, listen to the podcast, share it with your friends. Uh, this is going to be a fun ride. Anything, anything that has to do with me hunting with the high point is going to be labeled hunting with high point. Okay. My goal, my ultimate goal here is just to have a good time. What kind of timetable you got on this? So my hunt, most of my hunts will start on October 10th and I've got till the end of the month. Okay. So this is an October Yes. Bag and meat in October. Yep. And I've got I've got a someone who if they can make it work, they've have action cams. They're volunteering to come along and record the whole thing. Wow. Like this is the whole thing, man. I've I've arrived. You're gonna drone it? 
I, I can't run a drone while I'm hunting. I can't run a drone. I, I have to look. Well, I'm just going to throw a number out there. If I run a drone, I can't hunt that area within like three days. Oh, uh, they call it calling that cheating, though. Yeah. Yeah. So I can't, I can't do a drone. Can't do it. I've had people offer, like numerous people offer. People are getting behind this. They love it. A lot of people are just scoffing at the idea on Facebook, but this is, this is going to be freaking fun. Hmm. This is going to be fun. I really, what I'd like to do, honestly, Kai Point, if you're listening. If I'm successful, if I do this and it's good, which I think it will be, um, I don't, I don't want, it. I don't want, my, I want, I want to, to be accessible to your followers. <laughs> okay, <laughs> right. And I tell you what, if you got that extra ticket blown around when it comes to Shot Show, man, I'd love, I'd love an invite to Shot Show. I'll come stand in your booth. You're the hunting with High Point uh, guy. Yeah, we could, we can collaborate. We can make some videos about hunting with high point. Like I'll give you all my footage and I'll come stand in your booth. I'll be there. I'll just stand there and talk. I'll, people come up, say hi. I'll, you know, I'll shake hands, kiss babies, whatever I got to do. I think that, I think that'd be fun. Well, that's kind of cool for him. I mean, if you can drop a mule deer, uh, freaking elk, maybe I'll do elk next year. <laughs> I mean, can you, can you do that? I believe so. I have, I have to look. To look. I believe so. Uh, if you, yeah, well, if you can drop that perfectly good for self-defense oh heck yeah heck yeah so i tell you <laughs> what with a bipod in the scope <laughs> <laughs> well okay so let's let, let, let's really quick i'm using a scope right because sights even i don't yeah, yeah, care yeah. what handgun you have sights at 50 yeah. 50 yards are pro it's it's hard well you 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 want to be ethical about it yeah. you want to drop the thing and that's why i have i mean also using a bipod and a just you know as a rest of some sort yeah. because I just I want to I want to get a good shot. I want to you know it just needs to be good. Right, right. I understand that. So that that's what I'm. It, it's at. it's for fun and it's interesting, but it's not at the expense of the animal. Right, right. You, you, you're ethically harvesting this thing. This animal's going to be eaten. Yeah, I'm uh, not going to go out and be just a yeah, freaking it's, goofball. It's, it's not for YouTube uh, clicks and silliness, and not not Jake Paul walking through the <laughs> the Japanese uh, hanging place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not doing that. I'm not doing that. So, well, cool, man. You got to get back to work. And it's like, it's like, I could tell by the bead of sweat dripping down your forehead and mine. It's hotter than, it's hot in here. Hey, have a jumpsuit. Yeah, it's, it's hot. I'm warm and I've got short sleeves and shorts on. So, uh, I appreciate you stopping by. It was fun. Yeah, I think I've just rambled and didn't make any no, sense. No, you whatsoever. did. You always say that, but you do wonderful. You are a crowd favorite. Um, I tell you what, uh, go check out. A forgotten American. Uh, well, because because out, when you do that in two or three days, that's like your check in saying I'm I'm still good, folks. No one's knocked at my door yet. Not yet, not yet. I am a nonviolent, peace loving man. I'll give you uh, the high, the yeet cannon, and nope, they're gonna nope, they'll just nope, start laughing. Nope, they'll nope, just start nope, laughing. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, we got it, we got it. So, okay, um, I tell you, share this on your social media, and I appreciate all the support. Share it on your social media. Share it with all your friends. If you ever got any questions or comments, or maybe you have hunted with your handgun. I might have just ruined High Point. might say, oh, man, we all... No, you're good. You hear this guy he's got on his show? Man, get... get. Oh, you're good. Right you're good. Um, call me. Text me. Area code 620-794-6223. That's area code 620-794-6223. Let me know uh, if you harvested an animal with a hanging. Maybe you've, I hope not, but maybe you've already hunted with High Point. I'm hoping I'm the first. I don't know that I am, but I'm hoping I'm the first. I'm thinking you're the first. I'm thinking maybe I am the first. I, pro I probably am with the JXP 10 since it's such a new model. Yeah. yeah. To, uh, I think most people that do it take out a Desert Eagle. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Or a, just a big, massive freaking yeah. revolver yeah, one of those big old yeah something. 18 inch barrel cannons <laughs> sweet maybe that's next year's project so <laughs> no i wouldn't want one of them. <laughs> okay well everyone you guys have a good week and i'll probably touch back midweek thanks for stopping by tarver yep bye